ba -da -ba -ba -ba. We're no longer loving it. <laughs> Hi friends, welcome back to Live with the Roxy on this beautiful Monday, March 21st. Oh, it's my friend's birthday. Wow, had I not just said that, I might not have remembered. Go Live with the Roxy, just another great thing that we did. It's my friend Will's birthday. We're going to text him together. Happy birthday. And we're going to call him later because that's what friends do. All right. Good work, team. Good work. Welcome back. Today, there's some fun entertainment stories going on. And we like fun here, don't we? It's kind of hard to remember the answer to that. feel like from the... I started going on air in 2010. So from 2010 to 2019... I feel like we, if somebody said, we like, do you like fun? The answer would have been like, yeah. In the last two years, it's like, do you like fun? It's like, well, it kind of depends on the timing of it. Where do I have to go? Do I have to leave my couch? Is it safe? Do I have to wear a mask? Am I worried about the mask knee? I don't know if I like fun anymore. Whatever. Here, digitally, live at the Roxy. We fucking like fun. And we like doing our makeup together. It's really just me doing my makeup while you guys are there. I just bought this new top. I'm really fucking loving the color. Just throwing that out there. This was a $10 top. And I feel like I look like a million bucks. I don't. I don't. I don't close to look like a million bucks. But I'm just saying some inexpensive clothing is just all it takes is a good color. And it's really comfortable. I got this. This is not a fucking ad. This is just in case you're in L.A., and you like cool clothes. Some of their stuff's more expensive, but some of it's not. It's place Sorella's on Melrose that Steph turned me on to. It's fucking cool. I'm also sad because Steph's leaving the country today. So I'm wearing her pants to make me feel closer to her. Basically, what I'm trying to say is I got in Steph's pants. I'm currently in Steph's pants. You guys are watching me in Steph's pants. If only I was in Darina's pants too, then it would be. Amen. <laughs> so none of that's what we were talking about today. Although I think I get a lot more views if if it was. What we are talking about is the world of entertainment, including Pusha T, who back in the day wrote the iconic I'm loving it, McDonald's theme song. And now he's put out an Arby's song. That is a diss track for McDonald's because apparently he was paid peanuts for what he did for Mickey D's, which is not fucking surprising. Not even close to surprising. So we will talk about that. Plus, Rachel Zegler is officially not invited to the Oscars. This is so stupid. Um, We're going to talk about it. It's just dumb. Dumb, da dumb, dumb, dumb. Really dumb choice. And... And Tyler, who I guess is, has been deemed the American Jane Austen, had a lot of interesting thoughts on being a novelist and the way that the industry is going. And I wanted to read some quotes from her to you guys and get your thoughts. So let's get into it. And anything you guys want to talk about, streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer, super chat in. Questions, comments, concerns, facts, randoms stories, movements, compliments. I'm just naming other things you could send in the stream labs. Let's see what's going on over there so far. My fucking voice has been gone for days. I'm um, still my cat cups. Y'all know. Y'all know the deal with the cat cups. And I haven't been here live at the Roxy in a couple of days. So get in your Get in your Streamlabs. There was a Streamlabs while we were gone. It was a big one coming from Christian Hardesty who... Is just the most generous, supportive. So much love on the 19th. He wrote, hey, and I appreciate it. Thanks, Christian. 
I hope you are, uh, I hope you, your hangovers have not been too bad, especially post St. Patty's Day. Wait, Ryan Payne says, geez, it's a little creepy. What's creepy? What did I say that was creepy? All the things that people could send in? Whatever. Because I'm a creep. Everybody at home, you know you're singing it. I'm a weirdo. What the hell am I doing here? That song came on the other day. And Steph had not heard it. And I was like, oh, God, I'm so jealous of the fact that you get to listen to incredibly great music for the first fucking time still. It's been a long time since I've heard, like, a true rock and roll song for the first time. But it happens. Oh, you guys are calling me a creep for being in Steph and Dee's pants. Not even in Dee's pants. Dee's nuts, am I right? <laughs> it's going to be a weird one. We can already tell. All right. Let's talk about this, this diss track. So for those of you guys who didn't hear it, I don't want to play it because I think I'll get flagged. But there is a sick new diss track from Pusha T because Pusha T put out or did the original um, McDonald's song or the I'm, I'm loving it jingle and he made almost no money off of it because that's what happens when you with contracts, when you're newer, the whole thing. And now they put out a commercial that is like striking back at McDonald's so hard and it's kind of fire. You guys should go listen to it. This is what Rolling Stone magazine had to say about it. They said, when musicians say it's really a full circle moment for me, you're not usually talking about a fish sandwich diss track. But here we are two decades after a then, oh, by the way, this is this is coming from Jason Newman. Sorry, did I say that? Rolling Stone, Jason Newman. These are not my words. I can't take credit for it. Um, from Pusha T, from Pusha T, who wraps his way into jingle immortality with McDonald's, I'm loving it campaign, as y'all know, and that's how the battle-tested Virginia rapper describes his latest project on the new Arby's commercial, Spicy Fish Dis. That's hard to say, by the way. Spicy Fish Dis, Spicy Fish Dis, premiering today. Pusha T takes aim at McDonald's fish uh, fillet fish sandwich to shill for a competitor. On the surface, it makes for one of hip hop's silliest, most corporate quote unquote beefs. Where's the beef? Famous rapper gets paid a ton to promote one mass marketed product by dissing another. In fact, this sometime uh, Clips MC says this track and its backstory holds significant financial and personal lessons for him, serving as a cautionary tale on less frivolous topics such as song ownership and sync rights. But dessert is always the best course, so let's eat that first. The wacky ad blends lines you might hear on a proper Pusha T record. I could sell water to a whale. How could you ever think I'd fail? With ruthless, ruthless targeted attacks against Mickey D's. filet fish is shit, and you should be disgusted. <laughs> the ad overlays surreal images of a clown holding bags of money, a sailboat sinking into the ocean, and a close-up slow motion shot of a bear eating a fish. The tone is firmly tongue-in-cheek in line with the quasi-Shakespearean cool hunting Twitter wars that may, many fast food companies have undertaken in recent years. If you listen to it, you guys will be like, oh shit, oh shit, oh snap, oh snap, oh snap. So going on more um, about this, they say since the start of his career, Former clip star has positioned himself as one of rap's low-key greatest businessmen, aligning himself with artists and brands for a small fortune. But in 2016, industry vet Steve Stout shocked the industry when he claimed that Pusha T and his brother Malice, who now raps under the name No Malice, were the writers behind McDonald's ubiquitous I'm Loving It jingle in 2003, alongside Pharrell Williams and Justin Timberlake. The company's already paid Timberlake $6 million to record his song I'm Loving It, on which the jingle is based. Pusha's role in writing the jingle has since been disputed by others, but back then, Clips had just released their debut album, Lord Willen, and were still working towards getting a stable foothold in the industry. Pusha says, now that he was paid a one-time fee, but no royalties for what would become the longest-running marketing campaign in the company's 82-year history. Quote, I'm solely responsible for the I'm loving it swag and the jingle of that company. End quote. That's what he said to Rolling Stone. Quote, that's just real. I am the reason. Now I got to crush it. Uh, I did it at a very young age, at a very young time in my career, 
but I wasn't asking for as much money and ownership. It's something that's always dug at me later in life. Like, damn it. I was a part of this and I should have had more stake. It was like half a million or a million dollars for me and my brother, but that's peanuts for as long as it's been running. I had to get that energy off me. And this ad was the perfect way to get that energy. Like, you know what? I'm over it. So I think if you're watching the show or if you're me, a half million or a million for him and his brother is not peanuts to me. But I get what he's saying for the for the duration of how long this has been running, comparison to what Justin Timberlake has made, also for how much work he put into it and how successful the entire campaign has been. It's not a great deal. I don't know that I would ever call a half million or a million peanuts. If somebody gave me a half million or a million dollars, I would make that work for the rest of my life. <laughs> I would turn it into such a beautiful moment. I would, I would do so much with it. It's so not peanuts. But yeah. Yeah, I hear him. What do you guys think? Do you think it's funny you put out the diss track? Do you think it's petty? Have you listened to it? Did you think it was good? Let me know, streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer, super chat in. What are your thoughts on Pusha T and this debate? No Streamlabs today. It's like y'all don't even see me in my blue shirt. Bang in my white tee. Good one, Rox. Really solid. Rachel Zegler not invited to the Oscars. I heard rumors that Ansel Elgort is. Now, I don't know if that's real or not. That has not seemingly been confirmed. That would be super fucking shitty if, if it's shitty that Rachel Zegler's not invited in general. However, if she's not invited and Ansel Elgort is invited, that's really bad. It'd be bad if he's invited because as, as human beings, we're not supposed to reward people who are doing bad things and as you guys know Ansel Elgort it was challenging to even watch him in the movie based on the accusations against him that being said it he is one of the stars of an Oscar nominated movie so it wouldn't be as shocking that he is invited although I don't think he should be as the fact that she's not she is Maria in West Side Story. West Side Story has is not just nominated for Best Picture, but for a ton of nominations. And she is the star of the film. And in a, in a time in which the Oscars are so out there about representation matters, and you're taking a, a movie that is one of the best pictures of the year, and the star of that movie, who's repeatedly said she would like to go to the Oscars, is not invited to the Oscars. Who the fuck is invited to the Oscars then? It's, it seems like such a bummer. I'm just not into it. And if he is, if Ansel Elgort is invited, that's egregious, my dudes. Because, no. And I don't know how those decisions are make, uh, made. I don't know whether the studio, if your film is nominated, if you're allowed to select a certain amount of people to go, or if the Academy does the nominations and I don't know, but I do know that it's not a good look, Oscars. And you already have a lot of very not good looks already happening, Oscars. It's not, not cute. Matt Link in the chat. I'm definitely not invited. <laughs> I feel that. This is what Sh uh, Steve Calderon said the Academy today invited DJ Khaled, Tony Hawk. Kelly Slater and Sean White to be presenters. I don't get why invited these people and not Rachel Zegler, who they could have made an uh, they could have made a presenter. Also, I almost said inventor. I think I did say inventor. Yeah, it's just not not smart. And it's like, who the fuck are making these decisions? Anytime you see Twitter blow up about something, and it's like, yeah, did nobody run this by anybody with a brain? Jake Yakovet in the Streamlabs, streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer says, I couldn't give a single solitary shit about Pusha T's beef with McDonald's. <laughs> but it's kind of funny. Rachel Zegler thing is fucked up. They definitely didn't read the room and people need to stop questioning her being Latina. It's insane. Oh, I haven't seen that, Jake. What are people saying? I definitely missed that. 
Yeah, I don't know. I wonder if there's less seating this year because of COVID, but I don't think so. Restrictions here have completely opened up. I don't know. Neil Hansock, did she do something to upset someone? She's just a kid. It's like how, I don't know. I don't know if that's possible, but maybe. Let's, let me read some things to you that I, I saw that I thought were interesting and I want to know your guys' thoughts on them because I genuinely don't know what I think and I feel like I go back and forth all the time. So Sunday Times Culture put this out and they said, America's Jane Austen, which they're deeming Ann Tyler to be, talks to Sarah Baxter, STM, about strange families, the tyranny of mobile phones and how she never intended to become a writer. But then there were some specific things she said, some quotes that I'm going to read and I'm curious your thoughts. She said, I'm astonished by the appropriation issue. It would be very foolish for me to write, let's say, a novel from the viewpoint of a black man, but I think I should be allowed to do it. What do you guys think about that? So she's saying it would be foolish to do that, but she thinks she should be allowed. And I'm sure when she says allowed, she means culturally allowed to do that. Do you think that, and I don't know that she is white, but she is definitely white presenting or passing. Do you think that a white woman should be allowed to write a novel from the viewpoint of a black man? And by should be allowed, I don't mean by punishable by law. I mean in the court of public opinion. She also said a few more things. She said, if a talented person has written novels in the 1930s or 40s and it is discovered that there was something he did or said, even something as bad as sexual harassment, he should be condemned for it, but I don't see why you should withdraw his novels from publication. What do you guys think about that? When we find out bad things about people from the past, should they be condemned but their work should still be eligible to be seen? Or should we stop producing and watching their stuff? It's kind of like the argument of separating art from the artist, but a little different. And usually when we talk about things like this on the show, it is in regards to TV and movies. I wonder what we think about literature. How do you guys feel? Do you agree with these two comments? Do you disagree? She also said, I never planned to be a writer at all. For years, maybe even today, sometimes I think, what exactly am I going to do with my life? What is my career going to be? I'm only 80, for God's sake. I liked that quote because, you know, Grammy right now is 94. And I keep trying to talk to her about different things like getting back into swimming or, um, you know, the book club she's in and all that stuff. And it's like, at this point, we, you know, people can live for a really fucking long time. And if she, if, if this woman wants to continue working and she's 80... She very well might have 20 years of work left in her. Betty White, 99. Working till the day she went, you know. Let's see what it is you guys have to say about all of this. Streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer. Should people be able to write for voices of other people or write entire novels in those voices? Or no? Do we think that people who've done bad things in the past should have their work pulled? Or just should they be individually condemned? Plastic Life says, as a black man, I don't really care as long as it's not supposed to be a realistic representation of black culture. It's fine. Uh, I wonder what people think about that because wh how, who's to say or how are we know to know if it's supposed to be realistic or not? Is that just based on the person reading it? Matt Link says, generally speaking, yes, but the amount of criticism you should receive should be tied to how much research did you do on the subject you are presenting. Andrew says, personal, personal decision. Rich says, fiction is fiction. I really don't know. I really don't know. It's, it's challenging, too, because I think that we should all want to share stories and voices of people we connect to, and we don't. Not we should all want to. All storytellers should want to do that. And it's not like the only people I connect to are Jewish women. You know, there's other people's stories that I want to help to tell. 
but I would not be able to do it as realistically as somebody from a different culture. And I would do my research, but it, it's not the same. Streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer. Glenn Caesar says, hello and good Monday, Roxy. Sending all wishes. And thank you for being with us today. Peace, bunnies, hugs, and good stuff to you, your dad, Skyjet, Grammy, Popo, and your family. Be most excellent to yourselves and each other. Hashtag glow in your flow. That's a great top, Roxy. Purple is my second favorite color. It's like kind of a purpley blue, bluey purple, but I love purple. Plus to me, purple is an awesome mystical color, so I love it. Purple is a level of fire, which I call starfire burn hot, which means you truly are like a warm, cozy, yet brilliant fire. Thank you, Roxy, for doing your best to breathe. Glow and radiate each of your days, your weeks, your months, New York years. You've been there for me, us, when the rain starts to fall. Thank you for being you always and always. Hashtag be an anomaly. Thank you, Glenn, for those comments. I appreciate you, my dude. I really do. Shout out to everybody watching live, by the way. Yeah, do you guys think this is blue or purple? Kind of hard to tell. Mm -hmm. Ryan Payne says, it's a very hard subject to touch. I want to say no, but as a comic book fan, there are plenty of characters of minority are written by white writers. It all falls to interpretation and execution. Hmm. Yeah, when I was reading this, I was like, it's interesting her thought process on this. And I don't, I don't think she's wrong. I just don't know that she's right. I don't know that there is a wrong or right. And I think if, if something's well done, it's well done. But if it's not, then you really screwed the pooch. You know, especially if it's not only just not well done, but it's offensive. Which a lot of times, if you don't do enough research, things are. So, you know, I have some friends who have written Jew Jewish characters, whether it's in novels or movies or TV shows or comic books. And they ask me to read it first. Or they'll ask me, like, is this an okay thing? Or would, like, do you feel like this sounds like a Jewish person? Or is anything about this not right? It doesn't speak true to Jewish people. And I always really appreciate that. I I love being a Jew who, you know, I would never be upset by somebody asking me to like clear something with the Jews. I tell everybody I can't speak on behalf of all the Jews, but I can definitely give you a Jewish woman's perspective on a character. And I like when I get asked that. Billy Sarzanak says, hi, Roxy, how are you doing? Look amazing as always. Thanks. Going to Boston in September. Can't wait. Oh, that's awesome. Do you like the two new Chili Pepper songs so far? How new? When are you talking about? Did I miss something? Chili Peppers. I'm so behind on my music. Um, Let's see. Chili Pepper songs. Let me go to my music. Let me know from when... Okay, I might have some I might have some uh some listening to do. Let's see, chili peppers. Unlimited love. Okay, black summer and poster child were dropped. I haven't listened to them yet. My God. When did they drop? See how far out I am? I thought everything was coming in April. Black Summer, RHCP, Black Summer drop. How are they? Wow, why did I think everything was dropping in April? Oh, on February 4th? Because remember last month I did a review of... Let me listen again and tell you. I haven't loved a Chili Pepper song in... I mean, obviously, they're my favorite band, but I haven't loved a Chili Pepper song in a really long time. A really long time. I, looking at their most recent albums, too, I really struggled with The Getaway. Um... Yeah, I really struggled with the getaway. I'm with you. I I didn't love Stadium Arcadium as a whole either. There was a couple things off there that I liked. I like She's Only 18. Um, 
I loved Strip My Mind, or I really liked it. I liked Wet Sand. Heart to Concentrate was great. Um, I like Make You Feel Better. So we're talking about 16 years ago. Isn't that fucking crazy? That's how long it's been since I like liked songs off of an album. But since I loved an album as a whole, I haven't loved an album of theirs since By The Way. So that's 20 years ago. It's fucking crazy. It's sad that it's my favorite band and I don't know when they're dropping new music. I knew that they were dropping the new album, but I didn't know that it... Yeah. It's been a really, really fucking long time since I've loved a song there. So I'll listen to the two. I'll let you guys know. I love them so much, but it's like, I love By the Way and California Cation and One Hot Minute and Blood Sugar Sex Magic. I love, I love their greatest hits album too, obviously. I love, I love their 90s, 2000s. I'll let you know. I'll let you know. Thanks for the question. Appreciate you. Streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer. We are getting out of here relatively soon. So send in any last minute questions, comments, concerns, bits, bots, thoughts, twats. All the stuff. Cena Bigelow says, meanwhile, I'm still over here like the Chili Peppers still make music. I know. I feel the same way about a lot of the bands that I used to love, like, you know, Dispatch and OAR going on tour. And I'm like, I fucking used to love them. But what new, their new stuff. What? Same thing, Coldplay. I used to love Coldplay. Not digging their new shit at all. Maybe it's because of the place in life you are when they come out or maybe it's because people try to become more mainstream i'm not even i'm not i'm not quite sure i'm not quite sure all right getting out of here gonna listen to these songs let you guys know can't wait to talk chili peppers more and other things i will be back i think because i'm not doing sen tomorrow very likely i can be here i'll keep you guys posted if not, definitely Thursday. So much love to you guys. Stay safe. Stay sane. Put down the toilet seat and lid. We don't want those flumes. Last minute stream labs. I'll be taking them. Send them in, y'all. It's been a month. Glenn Caesar says, hopefully you live in the serenity and truly get to see and feel and perceive yellow colored and green colored sparkles manifesting happiness to enjoy and healing your day-to-day life today, tomorrow, and beyond. Your good people and inspiration and ultimate treasure. Thanks, Glenn. I am an ultimate treasure. Why I said it like that, I don't know. Justice for all the people who've lost their lives due to excessive force. And um, don't talk about the Holocaust. Did I tell you guys that one already? I know I'm preaching to the choir, though. All right. Stay safe, stay sane, and I'll see you either tomorrow or Thursday. But definitely Wednesday for the World Girls. We're doing a whole Vagina Live thing. It's going to be fucking awesome. So check that out. Okay, later.